Yeah, you had some great announcements here. We saw a new hero, Lucio, uh, being announced from you guys on Wednesday, and now he's already playable in the area. Maybe talk a little bit about what kind of character or, and hero Lucio is in terms of ability and where he fits in into the gameplay, Jeff. Well, gameplay-wise, he's fantastic for us because we have a lot of support characters already. We've got Mercy and Zenyatta, but now we have a really highly mobile support carrier, uh, c character in... What's the dynamic like over in the development team when you guys are adding these new heroes? Like, how, how is it actually forming in terms of the beginning process all the way into the creation? Yeah, so it really depends on the hero. Sometimes heroes start from a cool gameplay mechanic. Like, for example, Tracer, we knew that we wanted a hero that could blink three times across the map and then rewind back in time and also had a pulse bomb. And that kit just uh, really fit uh, a hero that we wanted to build. And then. Uh, our lead concept artist, Arnold Sang, and, and the rest of the art team come up with lots of different potential uh, character art for the hero that uh, ultimately ended up landing on Tracer. Um, some heroes start from the design side, like Tracer. Some heroes actually start from a really inspiring piece of concept art, like Zenyatta, for example. We just said, wow, that, that Omnic is so cool. We have, yeah. to come up, we have to come up with a kit for him. He's definitely one of the most unique characters you have in the game. And of course, Michael, as a senior game designer, you're driving a lot of the creative part of it as well. So what, what gives you the inspiration to create such characters like Lucio? And how does he fit in the entire cast, considering the backgrounds of each character? Well, I'm really lucky. You know, I work with some supremely talented artists. And sometimes, you know, I look at the character designs we come up with. I see the abilities they have. And I'm just like, coming up with storage for that is easy. As far as Lucio, <laughs> Uh, goes, I mean, as easy as it gets. But uh, as far as Lucio goes, you know, he's this. He's, I feel like he's really emblematic of this world we're trying to build with Overwatch. He's bright. He's optimistic. He's energetic. When you look at him, he's just skating around. You know, he's he's loving life, and he's he he is the the epitome of the kind of character who's responding to Tracer's call. You know, the world could always use more heroes, and I think that's Lucio. I really love the, the job you've been doing with the backstories in general of those heroes. It's just so nice how it all comes together and also how you announced it. For the people who haven't seen it, head over to uh, the Overwatch website and check it out because when this year has been announced, it hasn't been announced as like, hey, here is our new hero. It was just like, hey, here is this DJ dude and he's uh, you know, he's coming from, from there and there and he's doing this and this and check out his soundtrack. It's really great. Like He's doing some music and he's touring the world. So everyone instantly started guessing like, oh my God, is that like a Bart class? announced like what, what, what's <laughs> going on it, that's so interesting so yeah. that, that was just really amazing to like follow that process now a new hero is not the only thing you've been announcing here we also saw two new maps already playable at the show floor so let's maybe talk a little bit about uh, Volskaya as well as Numbani uh, maybe you want to start with that yeah, one, sure thing uh, Volskaya is fun for a lot of reasons um, it's got a great backstory I'm sure Michael will talk a little bit about that but in terms of game mechanics it's an attack defend map similar to Temple of Anubis, which we already have in the game, and Hanamura. But what's really cool about both guys, we're trying new stuff with alternate flanking routes that certain mobility characters can get to. For example, Lucio can wall grind and get past uh, the first choke point, which is pretty amazing. Um, Farah can fly around the second uh, control point and get there right away. And we've placed a bunch of moving platforms in the map for the first time. And that's opened up whole new territory for characters like Bastion and Torbjorn, who before were stuck being static characters. Right. Now they've got these moving platforms that they can, you know, sort of get into all sorts of trouble with. <laughs> When you're creating these types of maps, uh, how does it actually relate to the entire objective? Because again, we do have different things for Volskaya versus Nimbani. Uh, so Matthew, what, what's the process of how you guys determine like what were we going to make the primary objective for this game? How are we going to have the team dynamic turn into fighting as well as fighting for the ultimate goal? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, if you look at something like Nimbani, one of the inspirations that we had for Nim Nimbani, which is the second map we brought, mm -hmm. Nimbani is a hybrid attack uh, defend, so you capture a control point, and then you escort a payload through the streets of Numbani to the Numbani Heritage Museum. The really cool thing is we, we decided that um, we got a really lot of positive feedback from the Overwatch opening cinematic that we announced at BlizzCon last year, and kind of the key piece of that cinematic was uh, an item called Doomfist Gauntlet. And we said, wow, it'd be really cool if we did something with Doomfist Gauntlet in the game. And so the payload objective in Numbani is actually to escort Doomfist Gauntlet back to its rightful resting place inside of the Numbani Heritage Museum. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Maybe, maybe Mike, you want to share some more light on the backstories of those maps? Yeah, sure. It's actually uh, really interesting. I've seen some uh, speculation already about Doomfist <laughs> and his gauntlet. Um, but I'm going to go on a little digression here, actually. You know, our universe is sort of defined by this event called the Omnic Crisis, where, you know, robot populations around the world had this uh, huge global conflict with humanity. And uh, in the maps that we've shown already, you see a lot of this conflict playing out. You know, there are still wounds from that time. Um, in, you know, in King's Row, the Omnics and humans don't quite get along. But one of the things we're really excited about Nimani is to show the place where they do get along. Humans and robots here live in peace. You know, they, they're uh, united as one people. They have equal rights. And because of that, they've been able to build this amazing first world city. And I just think it's this awesome, you know, vision of future Africa. Yeah, it's awesome to see that you guys are continuing to build this world out, too. You know, I saw the initial map pool. My favorite was King's Row. And now you guys have Nibani and Voxaya included in. And it's just cool to see that all, all of a sudden, there's all kinds of opportunity situations that you're going to have to play Overwatch, but again, respecting the world.